So as folks are filing in, just um, a reminder to make sure your audio is um, turned off. It should be turned off as you come in. So just keep it that way and feel free to turn your video on so we can, we can see each other. Um, because this is really a, um, an evening where we share with each other and, and where, where you are on stage if you want to be. Um, so welcome everyone. My name is Isabel Janichus. I'm a co-founder of the New Mexico Healthy Soil Working Group. Um, and with me are my friends and colleagues, Rob Hirsch. Rob, say hello. Hi. Okay, that's, that's Rob. And Christina Alday Bondi. Hello. <laughs> and uh, you will meet these two uh, throughout the, the evening. So we want to start with a land acknowledgement. Um, we are a statewide group, um, but I'm speaking to you from Santa Fe, which uh, the original Tewa inhabitants called Hoge, White Shell Water Place. So these are the homelands of the Tewa, and specifically the Okeowinge people who settled it in, in villages in and around this area, dating back thousands of years. So I believe that as someone who is not indigenous, it's really important to know and recognize the original stewards of this place to learn from history and to share the land with all its human and non-human inhabitants. And in doing so, um, we, we are committed to not only healing the land, but also healing our relationships with each other. So Christina will um, help us through the process of sharing our stories. Got, um, Andrew Stone first here in the North Valley. Hello, everybody. How are we doing? So the story I want to share is uh, I've been doing organic gardening and farming in the North Valley for about 40 years. And when I first got here, my neighbors, Mr. Garcia, he'd be about 100 this year. And back then, he said, when I said, I'm all into organic gardening and you you basically take the chicken manure and you add it to the llama poo and you mix in your green and whatnot. And then he, he, he turns to his son, he goes, this is the way we used to do it. <laughs> and uh, there was just this era during the 60s and 70s where big ag was pushing uh, chemicals and insecticides and stuff. And uh, it's really neat to know that all the organic gardening thing is really our real legacy, our million year old legacy or whatever. And uh, one initiative that I've been involved with in Albuquerque as we see the city fill in and take over the last of the small little, there must be a thousand little farms in, and I mean quarter acre to one or two acres in Albuquerque. And so I've been working on an initiative to interest the city in helping owners keep the land instead of subdivide it. And they would do that by getting a conservancy easement placed on it. And they can actually get uh, tax credits for that. And so it's a way for people with land but without money to be able to keep that land in farming in perpetuity. And um, if anybody's interested in that effort, let me know. And that's my story. Thank you. Okay, Carl, St Carl Struck, you had your name in there. There I am. All right, so um, <clears throat> um, we live up in Taos County on uh, a land that was originally um, Picaris Pueblo land at 8,500 feet. We're tree farmers. We've been tree farmers for 30 years and it's tree farming by reduction. We, we uh, 40 acres of Ponderosa forest. Um, and uh, in fact, we were named uh, the 2019 uh, New Mexico Tree Farm Outstanding Tree Farmers of the Year last year. So um, Largely because I think I've been writing some articles for the tree, New Mexico Tree Farm Bulletin about uh, forest soil health. And, um, you know, all the, the soils start up in the mountains and it, it, they come down through the river valleys and enrich in all the farmland below. But uh, in the, after the uh, 
main uh, trees, the large uh, diameter trees were all cut in the early 1900s on our property, um, the soils were pretty denuded. Uh, they were overgrazed. Um, and so we're in the process of trying to re, um, re uh, invigorate the soils. Um, I stopped burning slash uh, 15 years ago and moved to uh, wood chipping all the slash. Uh, we're largely thinning the forest. It was uh, dog hair stands of Ponderosa. And uh, also uh, in 2010, uh, we uh, put in a large wildlife pond. Uh, we have a, a natural mountain meadow um, on the property as well. And so we've um, really seen an uptick in, in um, biodiversity of plant life, of animal life um, from the, the Add, adding water to basically an arid uh, environment. And um, lately, I've, um, besides trying to create uh, forest management techniques to uh, support the forest soil microorganisms, um, and I've come up with some good ones, uh, I'm also uh, sort of interested in trying to turn around the dialogue that a lot of foresters and, for and tree farmers have about and kind of a negative impression of uh, Rocky Mountain juniper. Everyone wants to cut them all down because they, you know, I've heard them saying they're invasive species, they're, they're uh, um, water hogs, uh, etc. But they are a natural part of the environment. They have, the, they do all sorts of great um, ecosystem services and provide wildlife food and, and um, <clears throat> cover. And they also create topsoil, a great topsoil producer. Uh, and I've been doing a lot of just observational research myself on, on looking at the thick lenses of, 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 of topsoil underneath these junipers and imagining what goes on underneath there when they absorb all the moisture that everyone calls them water hogs for. That's also being um, accessed by the mycorrhizal fungi that, that then take all those nutrients and water to all the uh, surrounding plants. So I think there's a lot of uh, pros to Rocky Mountain juniper that a lot of people don't, um, you know, add into the equation before they cut the trees down uh, and try and uh, become like ponderosa plantations. Anyway, that's my story. Um, I've been doing this for 30 years and uh, still doing it. And I love it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Raina, why don't you go ahead? Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Reina Bentia, and I am a small grower here in Albuquerque. I am from the Pueblo Azuni, and I have been farming for the past four seasons. I think my soil story started when I was um, in high school, when I was learning more about our agriculture systems back in Zuni, working for the Zuni Sustainable Ag Program is kind of where I started um, actually seeing the fields and uh, learning more about how our irrigation systems work and um, just being part of that uh, community that was still doing agriculture. It's a lot different from when it, when we used to grow um, thousands of acres of corn. And, and I think when I got into um, agriculture was learning um, more for our garden plots, um, starting with the waffle gardens is kind of where I started uh, really getting my hands in the dirt and learning how the waffle garden system was built um, using different types of soil. So in Zuni, we have a lot of clay rich soil and it's really red clay. And uh, that's what we use to um, make our gardens is by creating those um, bowls that the water would sit in for longer periods of time. And um, I learned as I was doing that um, is that they incorporated different types of soil into those um, depressions because uh, obviously clay doesn't have as much um, nutrients um, that you need to grow plants. So what um, we did was we collected some forest soil and we also collected some um, it's kind of like river soil or like flood, 
flood bank soil, um, which was um, all added into the <clears throat> depressions. And along with that, we added manure, um, sheep manure into the, into the waffles. So that created um, more of a, a system for the water to kind of collect and sit in and help the plants with all the extra nutrients in it as well. And I think on that smaller scale, when we used to do a lot more um, bigger fields, we would get that um, watershed um, water and all the um, debris and soil from the for upper forests collecting in areas where we used to grow um, much bigger um, crops like the corn and the squash and cotton. So coming from an ag um, community and learning about soil in different ways, um, I used to go to UNM and I took soil uh, science and I have been farming on a regenerative ag, or a, yeah, a regenerative and organic uh, field for the past couple of seasons. And I'm still trying to figure out how to translate some of the indigenous teachings that I've been learning about and incorporating that into um, like the modern um, soil science that I have been studying as well. So um, I'm really just like thankful to be um, learning both ways and trying to help um, other young farmers and um, young students um, incorporate both, both views. So I'm glad to be here and hearing from you all as well. Thanks, Marina. Okay, okay. Jay, let's try it again. <laughs> Can you all hear me? Yes. I'm so glad that Raina got to go first. Uh, I'm just so grateful to know her and work with her. Um, my name is Henry Jake Foreman. I was born and raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I've known Andrew Stone since I was a little kid. I went to school with his daughter um, at Manzano Day School. And I'm super passionate about soil. I think uh, my story started with, you know, of course, my ancestors on both my mom and my dad's side. Uh, they're both farmers. Um, mom's side from the Philippines uh, moved to Hawaii, and that's where my dad and mom met. My dad's side, absentee Shawnee from Oklahoma, moved to be the head farmer at the Navajo Industrial School in the 20s. So that's where my passion began, and both sides of my family said, go to school, get your degree. You don't want to be a farmer. And after going to school at UNM for 10 years, I still want to be a farmer <laughs> and uh, I'm still trying my best to do that. Um, but I got really interested, in, of course, into the soil food web um, by Dr. Elaine Ingham. She was able to come to Santa Fe, Santa Fe, um, Santa Fe Community College, I think back in about 2012. I just picked up my microscope. I was super into composting. I thought I had the best compost, turned it into the compost competition they had. And there was over 30 submissions and no one won because not one compost that was submitted had enough mycorrhizal fungi. And I'm sure as you all know, that's, that's a struggle that we have here in, in the Southwest. Um, and because we pick up all of our debris, we, we rake up all of our, you know, we, we uh, take all of our wood from, from our soil. And now we're seeing that desertification that's happening. So, Sure, like all of you, I got into Sensei of Fukuoka, Mansanobu Fukuoka, and the One Straw Revolution, and all of his work around natural farming. Um, and then in Hawaii, I got really into Cho natural farming, or a Korean natural farming. That's all about understanding the nutritive cycle of plants and, and all of the different um, you know, types of teas that you can make to help you know, invigorate the soil and ferment bones and make uh, indigenous microorganisms. So um, right now I'm working with Reina and now with a group of native farmers to learn more about, you know, the soil food web and, and continue to practice what we've already known for millennia, for generations, but just be able to, to bring it back. Uh, I'm an urban native Albuquerque, you know, soy de burque. So I'm kind of trying to make it cool and hip. Um, we created a cool concept called the compost cafe. You know, people are into buying lattes and stuff. Well, let's buy it for your soil. 
you know, and uh, let's let's bring that concept to the younger generation because I, we just had a call earlier with an elder and that's what he explained, you know, that that's what makes us indigenous people is by understanding the soil and the soil food web and the microorganisms. And it was always a part of our culture. And I think that's a great way to, to re-indigenize, you know, ourselves and, and all of us, I think here, you know, on this call, if we're, you know, sitting around talking about soil stories, you know, that that's, that's really powerful. So just want to thank you all for, for doing this. Uh, I would love to actually, you know, produce a film or a bigger story around this and share with you all in the future. But thank you all for, for having us and myself. And thank you all. Thanks, Jake. Ooh, you really set me thinking about a lot of things. Um, let's see, Amy, I think you're next. Hello, everybody. Um, well, I am I'm super excited to go Oh, I'm not a native. Can you hear me? Yeah, your audio is in and out a little bit. Oh, sorry. We have kind of sketchy internet here. Um, anyway, I, I wasn't born here in New Mexico, but I grew up in Taos. Um, and I share, um, I, I think actually, uh, Jake, I was at that same uh, workshop with Dr. Elaine Ingham. Um, and so I'm also interested in uh, microscope work. I haven't delved into Bokashi and and kind of that whole realm, but it's very fascinating. Um, so I, I just have a very short, brief um, soil story. Um, one of the most amazing um, microscope kind of aha moments I had was um, watching a little nematode and they, although they look like worms, they're not related. And um, I noticed I was trying to identify the nematode, and I, I noticed that she was uh, she had an egg. Um, she was a mama, and she and you could see the little baby nematode inside the mama um, moving around, and that was that just blew me away. It it made me realize how much um, how much is going on below our feet that we just have no idea uh, what's happening, and so. There's so much to learn. I'm excited um, about, you know, all there is to learn um, underneath our feet. And um, we have a little garden here at home, interested in raising some baby goats. So that'll be a new adventure uh, for our family. And we're excited to hear more about what's going on um, at other, around New Mexico. So thank you. Thanks, Amy. It's great. Ben, you put your name in next. Go ahead. All right. Hey, guys. Uh, I just want to quickly say hi. Uh, my name is Ben Dickerson. I work for Soy Lucians uh, here in Albuquerque. Uh, really just want to stop into this meeting and, and check in and hear what everybody is going through and, and what their situations are on the ground and what they're facing as we try to move forward into this next year and, and we're trying to do some exciting things, but uh, mostly I'm here to listen. I just wanted to quickly introduce myself and, and see what the concerns that everybody's facing in all the different regions. Um, as you know, we service mostly here, you know, central New Mexico, Central Valley. Um, you guys up in Santa Fe have a lot of great stuff going on with community resources and, and on the, uh, out in some of the Pueblos are setting up some great composting systems. And it's uh, Walter, our site manager, has been helping with uh, a few of the Pueblos, so that's great. Um, but really, that's all, that's all I got. I just wanted to introduce myself and, and let you guys know that we're here doing a lot of fun things, uh, trying some stuff with some Korean natural, uh, natural farming, getting some Bakashi going on at the site doing a lot with permaculture, but really just compost. So my soil stories are based in digging through uh, trash in, you know, 7,000 gallons of whole food waste. Uh, so nothing quite as interesting as what you guys have going on. So that's it, but thank you all for doing this and thank you for uh, sharing what you have going on. It's uh, interesting to hear. 
what everybody has. Thanks, Dan. Uh, appreciate that. Um, Ted, do you want to tell us about your soil story? Well, my story is going to be the most boring of anybody's because I am primarily a spectator this evening. I'm, uh, I'm part of the growing... <laughs> if that's my bookie, I'm not here. <laughs> Um, I'm a part of the Facebook group Growing Food in and Around Albuquerque and Foraging 2. I'm a master naturalist. I work with Food is Free. I do some container gardening and a little bit of in-ground gardening in my front yard. But primarily, I'm a, a, a community builder. And I'm here to learn and build community and grab ideas and, to be honest with you, steal some of them probably and share them with our Facebook group and make some new friends. Thanks, Ted. You're reminding me, I should mention to everyone that um, you know we have a, uh, a Facebook page uh, that's called NM Soil Stewards. And um, you're all welcome to, um, to, to join the group. Um, it's on page, it's group. So um, you have to answer a couple questions. They're easy, you know, it's just a way to, um, track things. I know several of you are already members of that group. Um, but um, just so you know, let's see. Steve Glass, I'm going to call on you next. <laughs> You're muted. You, <laughs> no, I'm working on it. I'm on my phone. So ah. muting, it's all tiny little buttons and things. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, well, uh, you know, you, uh, these stories are great, and there's so many connections happening for me here. Um, uh, like uh, Ted, uh, I probably was the guy that taught soil science in the master <clears throat> composters class you took. Um, then I, I worked with Jim to start Soil Solutions back in the early day while I was running the uh, compost facility for the, uh, for the city. And so that's really where, well, it's not really where my soil story started. Um, I, uh, I actually got, I, I studied soil uh, microbial ecology in college way back when, you know, when, when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, we were studying soil ecology at New Mexico State University and looking at uh, um, cellulose decomposition in desert soil. So that's, that's kind of where I, I first got in touch with the soil and then I you know I kind of diverted off for a while into the water and wastewater world but fortunately for me in the in the well about 1990 I I got to hired by the city of Albuquerque to run the the compost facility out on the West Mesa that took the the solid remnants from the wastewater treatment plant and converted it into uh, a rich uh, soil uh, uh, amendment. No, we were cautioned not to call it a fertilizer, which we never should. <clears throat> but I learned, um, well, you can imagine trying to sell uh, compost created from what is perceived as human waste is a, is a hard sell. So people don't want it in their yards and their gardens, and no matter how safe it is, <clears throat> no matter how many regulations we had to follow, people had sort of a knee-jerk reaction. So as a result, I spent a lot of time on the on the rubber chicken circuit talking to people about compost made from um, so-called humanure. And uh, in the process, enrolled in classes, talked to, uh, to agriculturalists, talked to gardeners, learned a lot in that, pro in that, in that, pro in that process and in those years about uh, soil health. And um, and I, I feel fortunate that I've been able to uh, to to uh, convey some of that knowledge that I gained uh, through teaching at the uh, at the Bernalillo County Master um, Composters, and I think we're in year ten or something like that. Um, actually, Master Composter existed way back when, and then disappeared, and they've come back. So that's good to know. <clears throat> I also uh, teach soil science and soil health and soil testing for the Bernalillo County Master Naturalist Program, which gives me an opportunity 
not only to share what I've learned over the years, but to enhance my own knowledge. Because I, every time I participate in one of those things, I learn something new about uh, soil health. And and um, <clears throat> so um, I'm a huge fan of soil uh, health. I, I have served on the Healthy Soils Program uh, Technical Advisory Committee to uh, to help decide which applications get funded with the state state funds. Uh, and my my love for soil health and my love for uh, you know soil ecology has brought me to uh, the Ciudad Soil and Water Conservation District here in in Everly and San Sandoval counties and and I've been with the district now for 17 years and clearly one of our one of our major um, initiatives is uh, maintaining uh, maintaining local agriculture and without healthy soil, local agriculture cannot be maintained. So we all, we totally recognize that we're bought into the, the core importance of, um, of soil health in, in maintaining not only local agriculture, but also these natural systems that we're trying to put in place to manage the stormwater that runs off the urban uh, area in Albuquerque. You know, right now it's all concrete line channels that go straight to the river. And uh, of course, what we're trying to do is 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 get people to think in terms of green stormwater infrastructure. What that means is a healthy healthy soil and vegetation mix that can absorb the pollutants that are coming off of the hardscape, can convert them into less toxic or non-toxic forms, help them infiltrate into the ground rather than run off into the river. So. Again, that soil health is is uh, core to to that, um, and so um, I, I I feel honored again that I was appointed as as a member of a conservation district to represent Region One of the Conservation Commission, State Conservation Commission, and the Conservation Commission as well is well. We're pretty much focused on policy, but a lot of that policy has to do with legislation that that enhances agriculture and uh, productivity in New Mexico. And we all know soil health is fundamental to that. And I guess just to wrap up to to wrap up my soil story, I'm I'm really pretty excited to announce that um my daughter and her husband will um soon be the owners of Soil Lucians, the compost place where they're negotiating right now for the purchase and I'm so proud of my youngest for taking that on. And so <clears throat> my sto soil story continues <laughs> into the future. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of her and pretty excited um, that, that, uh, that Jim Brooks and I got that thing started back in the day. And now here's little, little, she's not, she's 35, but whatever. My daughter and her husband will, will carry on the tradition. So um, that's cool. Right, Steve. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, wow. Um, Eric, did you want to say hello? Yeah, sure thing. So thanks very much. Um, and like some folks, not not I, I wouldn't claim to have much of a of a, a soil story, but um, I, I work in and around um, uh, sort of economic development and think of myself as a community builder, but we often use the term ecosystem builder. So we know how important it is to really learn from other groups that are doing very important work and learn from other folks that think of and work with systems differently. Uh, and I've been just a fan of what I've seen coming out of, of this organization. So basically just want to learn more, see some familiar faces, and uh, glad to hear the, these stories. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, good evening. My name is Tayan Benali. I'm from the Diné Nation. And uh, basically, I'm just here. Um, just wanted to introduce myself. This is the first time I'm on here, but I'm working closely with um, Flower Hill Institute out of Jemez Pueblo. So I do some project management and grant writing and consulting for them. And uh, right now, just, you know, looking to expand and, um, you know, the network and, you know, myself, I'm into working. I've worked directly in Pueblos and different tribes across the nation when it comes to climate justice 
And um, now we're working on agricultural, different agricultural projects with youth. And so throughout the nation and here in New Mexico. So, you know, just working to expand my network and looks like a, like Jake, I grew up here in Albuquerque, although my family's from the Northern Four Corners area, Bistai, which is south of Farmington, um, probably between Farmington and Chaco Canyon. But, um, you know, this is a great uh, way to just, you know, introduce myself. Um, I found out from Roger. I don't know if Roger has been on here before, if you all know him, but I just thought I'd introduce myself um, and say, <laughs> yeah, it's it. And um, yeah, so um, soil story. I, I would say that I've been really connected, um, you know, being indigenous. Um, my grandfather did a lot of farming, so I was out with him um, in the field. And um, myself, I'm just really passionate about like food justice and climate justice. And I've worked directly in Pueblos as well. I worked in Santa Domingo for a while. And so it was interesting to learn a little more about how connected the Pueblo culture is to farming. Um, the Diné aren't as close, I would say. And so learning about that was really, you know, interesting to me and, and I'm still learning about it. Um, but I would say that is my soul st soil story is, you know, starting at a young age, but I feel like it's innate in me, but more the work that I've been doing, I feel it's all interconnected, like, you know, agricultural justice, climate justice, and all of these systems like interconnect, you know, for the health and well-being, especially of, um, you know, us indigenous people. So I'm excited to learn more and see what everyone else is doing. So, yeah. Thanks, Ty. Claudia, I think you expressed an interest in going next. Yeah, I could share my, my soil story. So I'm sure like many of us, we have many versions of our soil story. Um, I would say that I've always been really um, drawn to nature in general. And um, I went on in Tucson to, to study natural resource management. And I just started learning all of these amazing things about how our natural resources work and learning about the fungi is really what drew me into soils particular, particularly. Um, but I am a uh, young uh, landowner who has a piece of land that I want to preserve and conserve and make sure that I, I treat it properly and that I'm paying attention to it. And one of our groups where um, Reina said something that has stuck to me um, about the like love, meaning that you have a deep observation and you tend that deep observation. And as um, I've gotten really lucky that I am able to practice that deep observation and, and tending um, and I get to forward that information to more people um, in my area as I am, I am a soil and water conservationist. That's my job, thankfully. And, and luckily I, I get to do what I love every day and Really my story, my soil story just starts with my, my dad, my grandfather who were ranchers in Mexico and my dad came out here, bought some land. I begged him to not sell it. And now I get to um, play on that land and, and enjoy it and love it and, and see how, how that soil really gives life and uh, just understanding those microbes. <laughs> it was the fungi, you guys. Long story short, they really pulled me in. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. It, isn't it interesting how many of us trace some of this to our grandfathers, you know? Um, our grandparents are the ones. And I'm gonna move to Nancy. Would you like to share? Me? Nancy. <laughs> Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. We can hear you. 
I'm not sure the, the video is, I have a bad connection. So, so um, my name is Nancy Singham. Uh, it's been such a treat to hear these stories. I hadn't planned on talking and then I started thinking and all these stories made me think of many things. So my actually, my, my story starts with my grandfather who had an orchard in uh, upstate New York in the Finger Lakes region. Um, and my dad was a gardener. I've been growing stuff since I was five. But my real story, so story starts when I was 55 and uh, started attending classes at the School of the Botanic Garden in Chicago, Illinois. And I was studying landscape design. And then I took a class in botany and botany changed my life. It was absolutely, uh, I just couldn't believe how all this stuff that I'd been doing all the year, how it connected to actual science. And so I switched immediately to Midwestern gardening, took a series of wonderful soil classes from people uh, around the state. And of course, the soil in Illinois is amazing to study. And uh, then when I retired, I moved back to New Mexico where I'd lived for 10 years and started working with the climate change group 350 New Mexico. And uh, of course, growing my own garden. I'd lived in the South Valley before and uh, had my own garden. And I, I like solar panels as well as the next person and electric vehicles, but my true interest in um, moving toward a safer climate really comes from growing and soil and carbon sequestration, all the things that go with that. So uh, now I'm working with 350, but I'm also working on a project called the Land Witness Project. Uh, we're interviewing people from various occupations in different parts of the state of New Mexico and um, telling their stories. So uh, not all of these are soil stories, although of course they all go back to soil. So it's a long and winding path for me, but it's really an honor to be here. Thanks. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Amy, would you like to share? Oh, yeah, um, I will. I'm sorry, I came on late, so I don't really know where to start, but um, uh, I just about always have had gardens. Um, my heritage, more than my parents, were um, interested in gardeners. Um, Finland, which I visited and visited my relatives. I got involved with an intentional peasant circle letter um, when I was in New Mexico and I went to New York, back to New York State, became involved with permaculture. And I wish I'd known more about soil when I had my five acres um, past Truchas because I know so much now and I really like what Santa Fe has to offer with um, Homegrown New Mexico, introduced me to a lot and the soil knowledge and all the wonderful movements that are going on um, and our regenerative urban farming group which branched out of XR and 350 is involved with and I'll just um, keep it there and listen to someone else, thank you. Thank you, Amy. Let's see. Jermaine, would you like to share, please? Hi, everybody. I don't have any stories to share, but I just wanted to say happy holidays to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Jermaine. OK, let's see. Johnny, let's try it again. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so my name is Johnny Chavez. I am, uh, my story story started probably uh, a couple, about maybe five years ago um, when I joined the Valencia Soil Water Conservation District. Uh, I joined them through uh, YDI. I've always been into uh, environment, environmental education and trying to learn as much as I can. And after being with uh, Vincent Soil Water for a little while, I started to get more, uh, I, start, I started to realize I'm more, I wanted to learn more about uh, the soil. And so I did a lot of research on my own, learning about soils. And then um, I started, now I'm going to get, I'm going, I, got, I got my associates in uh, criminology and 
which because I want to be some type of ranger when I was younger. But now that I'm older, I'm realizing that that's not what I want. I want to, I want, I'm going for, now I'm going for my uh, bachelor's in uh, wildlife conservation. So I'm trying to understand more about soils, uh, soil health, um, how they're connected, uh, especially here out in the desert, uh, here in the middle Rio Grande, uh, where a lot of that soil by, by, uh, by, by diversity is starting to die out. Uh, and because of that, a lot of the plants are also dying out because certain plants need amount of nutrition and different type of, like everyone will say, different type of microbes, uh, fungus, uh, diff uh, just different organisms in the ground that some plants require that they won't have in some areas that are slowly uh, dying out. So I want to learn as much as I can so that I could teach other people um, and uh, show them that things work. Uh, so and here like we're at my work, uh, we, we, we've been trying out the Johnson Sioux bioreactor, which uh, so far we've been having some really good results with and uh, we give that to, we give what we have what we have from the compost uh, to uh, farmers they test it out and so far they're getting good uh, good feedback from it as well so uh, anything that we're I want to try is to help improve the soil and if I could pull, bring that onto and teach other people I think that would be the best thank you Johnny I've heard really good things about that Johnson Sioux compost you're, you've been um, sharing with people. Um, Lisa, do you want to try it again? Can you hear me this time? Yes. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, you know, my soil story is very limited, but uh, it's um, really on two different levels. One is a very personal level uh, regarding my yard when maybe, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, I created uh, what I thought at the time was a permaculture garden by uh, scooping out basins and lining them with cardboard and then straw, filling them with straw, and then putting soil over the top, which was supposed to compost into a sponge that would hold water in these basins. So I slowed water down and I kind of confined it to these basins. And I must, and then I overseeded with uh, New Mexico wildflowers. And I must say, I had, it was a very uh, spottily successful. Um, so, that concept of permaculture did not really work very well for me in my yard in Santa Fe. Um, then I'm also very interested on more of a community basis uh, because uh, I'm on the board at the Santa Fe Farmers Market Institute. And over the years, we have uh, sent uh, many of our participating farmers to conferences uh, all across the Southwest uh, through our scholarship program. And um, I see that there could be a conflict between um, traditional New Mexico farming methods and uh, sustaining soil health. And so I would really like to explore uh, that kind of uh, how we can adapt the two together to continue to provide uh, abundant nutritious food to our communities in Northern New Mexico. Thank you, Lisa, <laughs> to talk more. <laughs> <Not later. laughs> okay, uh, Gail, um, why don't you go and then we'll round out with, with Melanie. Okay, hi everyone. I am a recent transplant to New Mexico. Um, I've had a house here since 1994, but uh, have never lived here. So my soil story 
is long and winding, but I'm just going to give you the highlights. Um, <laughs> I became interested in agricultural research and agriculture in general um, on an international trip. And when I returned to the US, I uh, decided that I really needed to learn more about agriculture. And so I, I didn't have any money, so I couldn't go to a university that actually had a degree in agriculture. So I got um, a, a, a double major in geology and anthropology and then went to graduate school at UC Davis where I studied soil science and international agricultural development. I worked with um, small scale slash and burn farmers in Mexico for my thesis. Uh, and then I went, we moved overseas for 10 years and I um, taught um, a lot of people about tropical soils. I was really a tropical soil specialist um, and tropical farming systems in Indonesia. And then we moved to England and I did postgraduate research at the at Royal Holloway University of London, uh, where I looked at upland farming systems and soil erosion. Um, and then in 2000, we moved to California. Um, I had some other, I had some soil science jobs in between, um, but we moved to California and I started working for sustainable agriculture nonprofits. Uh, I talked to lots and lots of small scale farmers. And what I found um, was that all of the farmers I talked to, all small scale farmers in Mexico and in Indonesia, in, um, in California, really were my teachers about soil and soil management. Um, and so I learned a lot from farmers and I became extremely interested in, um, in land reform, land justice, social justice. And for the last 10 years, um, until I moved here in, in June, I was the executive director of a research institute in California, where we focused really on um, social justice issues in agriculture. I'm really interested in finding my place here and I've loved all your stories because I see this great intersectionality. Thank you, Gail. Welcome to New Mexico. <laughs> okay, Melanie, take it away. <laughs> um, sure, can you guys hear me? Yes, go ahead. Oh, good, sorry, I had a little bit of connectivity issues. Well, what a, um, what a cool cross-section to hear about everybody and and to follow up Gail, because it really is a good segue. So um, kind of similarly, I've had a pretty diverse background, but I'm, I'm born and raised here in New Mexico. I'm native New Mexican um, from Tortugas Pueblo, which is in Southern New Mexico. We are not a federally recognized tribe, but we um, continue our practices and we are cousins to Isleta and Taos Pueblos. And um, yeah, I, I did not grow up in a farming, um, with a farming background, but I did start to get into farming as a Peace Corps volunteer. I was stationed in Paraguay in South America and worked with Guarani indigenous farmers there, which really introduced me to agroforestry and um, sustainable ag systems and international development. And so that's really kind of what got my toes wet. and. I was actually assigned as a beekeeping extensionist. And so I, I ended up going down that rabbit hole for the past 24 years. So I've been specializing in um, bee breeding and beekeeping. And it's really been pretty awesome because it's taken me around the world, um, been able to work on projects with people in different places. And also, sorry for the background noise, my son is also on a Zoom meeting. Um, but, um, yeah, I've also worked with various tribal communities here in New Mexico because your home always calls you back. So after having lived abroad for a number of years um, and traveling for a bit, I came back and started my own bee breeding farm on the high road to Taos, which this year is our 15 year anniversary. Um, it's had a lot of ups and downs because it is farming with livestock and with livestock that is very much um, affected by soil health and what grows from the soil um, and then what's applied and what is grown on the soil. So um, that really got me 
inspired over the years to start doing more farming research. And I went back to grad school a couple of years ago to work on a master's degree in entomology and um, I'm finishing that up. And I got back full time just this past uh, spring. I was doing research of a Fulbright National Geographic fellow in Spain. Um, for those who might be interested, today is my Nat Geo Instagram takeover. So I'm on, on Nat Geo Instagram today if you go on there to check it out. Um, but yeah, so I, and I also recently started a position as the extension educator at the Institute of American Indian Arts. So I love working with um, various communities and uh, really, you know, to be not as a pun, but from the ground up and the traditional knowledge and indigenous technologies and um, intelligence systems, I think are really, uh, worthy of not only review, but further integration. You know, we've kind of steered away from that. I think there's really good potential for fusion between traditional knowledge and Western science. I don't see them as having to be either or. I really feel that, um, you know, the future is, is, uh, is a combination of the two. And so that's kind of me in a nutshell. But yeah, my soil health, I don't actually own any land. So I really rely a lot on what other people are farming and growing and spraying or not spraying, hopefully. And um, I really love collaborative efforts. So I'm so glad to meet everybody and, and to hear more. Thanks, Melanie. Okay, great. So I will call everyone's attention to the chat. Uh, just briefly, there's uh, some interesting things that have been shared there. And um, I think we're at the bottom of our hour. Rob, did you wanna take it from here? Well, firstly, just to say thank you for sharing your soil story, everybody. Really sweet and, and thoughtful and caring stories about what brings you to appreciate soil health, but also uh, broader life stories. So we're very thankful that you opened up and shared. And we feel more uh, connected with everybody here. So. Um, I'm just concluding the show, not only the show, the webinar, <laughs> not only to thank you for participating in this holiday soil story, uh, but also to just really quickly introduce next month's soil story, which will be Tuesday, uh, January 19th at 530. And we're going to be focusing on policy just because the legislature starts then. And then we have a we have a healthy soil um, working group initiative that's supported by NMDA that we'll talk about, um, that's sponsored by uh, a, a great representative that may be joining us. And we'll have also discussion at the, on the legislature, legislature level to discuss how we can support uh, advancing healthy, the healthy soil program, as well as other related and very compelling initiatives that we can learn about. Um, that we'll have some special guests sharing those. Um, and, and lastly, just so you know, and we recently sent out a, a survey about this, but we really, really care. The Healthy Soil Working Group is a grassroots network that you're a part of, and we're so grateful. Uh, we really care about scaling up regenerative agriculture in New Mexico. And that is our foremost objective and goal. And we're gonna just discuss next month at, the, at this uh, session, just ways we can do that without requiring legislative or political involvement at, initially. I think initially we really importantly know that we have to act in our civil society to make a priority and build a movement. And then we can incorporate the legislature and the policy around that as well. But so anyhow, I wish everyone a really happy holidays and I'm so thankful to hear your stories. Thank you everyone. And if, if you're curious about the three of us, <laughs> our bios are on our website. So you can look at them there. <laughs> that way we, we don't have to um, have to take up the time with, with stories you can read pretty quickly. But everyone um, have a, a wonderful holiday. Um, stay safe.
And thanks for coming and sharing your stories. Good night. Thank you. Good night, guys. Good night, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much.